Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm super excited for today's video because I recently went down and visited Diane and Samson again. We were filming lots more episodes for our Earthly Roots podcast that we both run together, myself and Diane. And I was kind of in the process of starting like a week in the life, week in the garden kind of video, but I got a little bit carried away with the tour of Diane and Samson's beautiful homestead that I thought I would just make it into a video itself and today we're going to walk through some beautiful veggie gardens, see some animals and just see what a homestead can look like on a rented property. I really find so much inspiration and motivation just going around to other people's properties and just seeing things that are growing that I might be growing in my garden or that I want to grow uh, and just see how else it can be done. So that's why I thought it would be a really cool idea just to have a full garden tour and homestead tour for today's video. But I kind of start out the video with the intro saying that I'm doing a week in the life, which I'm just doing the first day in this video, if that makes sense. There will be a video coming in the future of a little bit more of a week in the life, what I get up to in my garden. But for today, we're just going to do a little bit of a homestead tour of Diane and Samson's property. If you're not already, make sure to go over and follow their channel. Uh, and I would love if you would subscribe to our Earthly Roots podcast channel as well. We have a YouTube channel where we film all of our podcast episodes uh, and they're all available on any kind of podcast app that you prefer to listen to. So I really hope you enjoy today's video and I will be back throughout this week with another video sharing what else I got up to after the day that I filmed it. And I have so many more exciting videos coming. I'm also potentially going to be doing Vlogmas this year. So there's a lot of content that I'm planning. Um, so yeah, I hope you look forward to all of that and enjoy today's video. Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm doing another week in my lifestyle video where I'm just gonna share lots of things that I'm getting up to in the garden this week. I'm hopefully going to get a lot of planting done, lots of seeds sown. I have lots to do for the flower farm, um, but it is Sunday today. I had to remember the day for a second, um, but I have been down here at Diane and Samson's place again. We have been filming more episodes for the Earthly Roots podcast. The last few episodes were really, really interesting. Um, one of them was actually all about the YouTube side of things and how to kind of create a business from your homestead or your garden and what our experiences have been um, running a YouTube channel. So if you're interested in that, make sure to go and head over to the Earthly Roots podcast Instagram page or YouTube or follow on any podcasting apps. We're really loving um, creating the podcast and just coming together, seeing each other's gardens and just being in a different environment as well. So I thought to start out this vlog, I would just share what Diane's garden is looking like and what she's growing at the moment um, because she has so much going on on her property. I'll do a little bit of a tour. We're going to head down to the food forest and grab a few cuttings. Um, and yeah, I'll share with you what she's growing in her spring garden and also a few of the little animals that she's got because there's some baby chickens over there that we will head over and go and have a look at. Um, but I think she's going to come down soon and uh, we'll do a little garden tour together, I think.
Great, so I'll let Diane say a little bit about what's growing in her garden at the moment. She's got a few different gardens, don't you? You've got so many gardens. Lots going on, but I'll turn the camera around and point it actually to the garden so uh, we can know what's growing. So I, over here I've got some of my garlic growing, which didn't do too well. But one thing I'm noticing is all of the tomato seedlings. All of the tomatoes from last year that dropped their seeds down here have now started to sprout up like little seedlings. Um, so I'll probably be transplanting them because they say you should never grow the same plant in one place. So okay, interesting. I'll put it somewhere else because apparently it can harbour diseases or yeah. things can go wrong if you do it more yeah, than one okay. season in one place. Okay. Yeah. And then elsewhere you've got some other spring veggies planted yeah, around. so the chives are starting to look pretty again and healthy. We had this weed that came up from all the wood chips um, and I've smothered it down and now the chives can take off again mm. i just love the little flowers that they have yeah, they're so, so pretty. pretty what else my potatoes coming up over here yeah. some tomatoes that i've transplanted in just tomatoes everywhere is my goal this year yeah. and potatoes, and potatoes. <laughs> well two things that we or you eat the only eat thing we need yeah, yeah. So over in this garden bed, I'm doing like herbs. So it's a lot of the things that I don't need to come out and touch too often. So there's chives, rhubarb, sage, oregano. I'm hoping the parsley will come up, but we'll see. Yep. Um, and then just little things like radishes and sweet potatoes as well. Yeah, it's slow going, but I think eventually it's going to look amazing. Yeah. So in this garden, this is our original one. I have potatoes and beans planted together so that the beans can add nutrients into the soil as the potatoes grow. There's garlic along the back as well as flowers, which once the garlic is harvested, will be able to come up. Radish that didn't quite work out, but kind of looks beautiful and fills the space. It is actually seeding. Oh yeah. So I'll be able to collect some seeds from it. Um, and that'll be kind of cool because I love radishes. I have an experimental chickpea plant, which grew and did a few things, but if it produces, that would be great. If it doesn't, at least it fixes the nitrogen again. Um, some carrots that I'm letting go to seed. This is like the seed collecting garden, I yeah, think. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> um, a, a few tomatoes. I think this are a St. Marzano, possibly. And then nasturtiums and comfrey in abundance. So pretty. And also has her compost set up around fruit trees as well. So she's got some compost there. And I noticed it's just in such a great position to also feed all of the trees that she's got around. I talk about this all the time, but like in-ground composts around the garden are such a great way to get residual fertilizer around your plants. So if you have a food forest or a veggie patch or somewhere that really needs the nutrients, having a compost bin right near it is just beneficial because you can just add all the waste into it. But it's also every time it rains, all the nutrients is going everywhere. So it's a really great idea. And I love all of the setup that uh, she has in her garden. Going for a ride. <laughs> so there were some baby chickens that just hatched the other week and they are absolutely adorable. One of them was actually just riding on the back of the mum, which was so cute, but um, it's really making me want to get chickens in the backyard. And Diane has said, if we ever do want some, to ask her. So maybe in the next few months we may get some chickens, but they are just absolutely adorable and I love seeing all their different personality, all the different colours. It's just 
really really cute and I love just watching chickens I could just watch them all day and probably will when we do get some so <laughs> I'm also in front of their bus that they're renovating for their future home so yeah they've got so much going on here on their property and it's so awesome to see all the different projects but uh yeah I'm super excited to see how this is going to transform in the future do you want to take some more lemons home we still have so many yeah I bet you would <laughs> You just gotta give most of them away. Yeah, that's the best though. Yeah, it is. Need to get rid of these big ones so that the little ones can have energy. Yeah. So we're heading over to the other garden now. So I'll share what is planted in um, that area. There's also some flowers up the front, which I'll do a little overlay here. I know you've been really enjoying growing flowers lately. I have, they're coming to an end though with all the rains and I think they've just kind of had their life cycle. So that's yeah. a shame, but they've been Do you have a favorite? Pretty. I really enjoy the ranunculus, uh, but also those like, I don't know what they're called, but the purple ones that just come out, they the get hyacinths. more beautiful. They really no, they you'll smell have, nice. There's still one in our garden, okay. so you can show it. But right. uh, they, they just come out and they become bigger and bigger as they grow until mm -hmm. they start to die away. But Okay, I'll put an overlay of what that one is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm good to pick up. So in a lot of these beds, we have the cold crops just coming to an end. So things like the radishes, um, leeks, which I'm letting regrow, which has been a really fun experiment because like they're doing so well. Yeah, yeah. There's carrots that are coming up, onions and garlics just about everywhere and broccoli that's either gone to flower or we're still harvesting from. Um, I did also plant some new beetroot plants around here. So hopefully they'll do okay um, and yeah that's about it for now because mm -hmm. it's still a bit slow going around here. Yeah. There are some some tomatoes though. I think this is tatsoi. I don't know. Yeah. Some Looks beans. Like but here I actually have the beautiful flowers that Robin gave to me and I was oh, able happy. to find them a spot, amend the soil so that it was good enough to support some new life and they're coming along pretty well. That one especially is just mm. pumping. I think Sam's moving the bus right now. It's so cool to see how this bus has already transformed. I don't know if I could do it, drive a bus like this. Go Sam. <laughs> So Diane and Samson have also been working on planting some trees on their property. They have this little orchard area here, which they've kind of zoned it off a little bit different to some of their vegetable gardens. And the geese come around here so they can kind of keep down all of the grass uh, in this area and have all of these gorgeous fruit trees here. Which I'll let Diane explain just what she's got planted here and what's doing really well. So it's all looking really lush. Um, the nectarine tree has a bit of this leaf curl, which is pretty typical. I've kind of tried to pick off the leaves that I see affected, but you're supposed to spray something on them. I think it's uh, like a copper spray to prevent that from happening and a bit of wind damage. This is a new apple tree that we have planted with lots of blooms. So I think this one's like feeling pretty happy. Um, around here we have some apricot trees so you need two different varieties to make it grow and they're doing 
amazing. If I get some apricots this year, I'm gonna be in heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Down this way, we have a cherry tree. Again, this one's doing pretty well. Cherries in time for Christmas, I hope, this mm -hmm. year. Normally we have Sam's uncle give us cherries, but if we can grow our own, even better. <laughs> Um, and then I have another apple tree here. This is a red delicious apple. Uh, it's kind of like one stick at the moment, so we'll see what it does. Uh, and then I've also experimented with transplanting some rhubarb here, which kind of looked like it was dying at first and now is establishing itself pretty well. Yeah, looks great. Because I've heard you can plant around the base of trees, like flowers and other herbs yeah. to kind of deter bugs. Yeah, and you should do that because that way the plant can take advantage of the roots of the tree because the roots of the tree will go down and dig down for nutrients and water. And then all of the plants up top um, can benefit from that as well. They can yeah. access the same root systems and then be able to benefit from the nutrients. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to plant things like carrots and potatoes around the roots though, because you'll get some funky carrots. But. True this is fine cool. and then you've got your bees over here yes so and some flowers. flower gardens around here and then the bees at the back um, I'm slowly establishing more flowers around here eventually I want it to be like a little whoops <laughs> falling over back here. eventually I want it to be a little whimsical garden where you can like take a sit down watch the bees and just listen to them as they explore the flowers yeah. that's the goal amazing So this side of the property is a bit of a mess. This is where the animals go um, and they don't mind. But we've got our meat chickens here. So we raise our own meat to make sure that it's ethical, happy meat that we're proud to eat and also is really good for our gut. Um, so yeah, we've got them there. We've had a bit of predator pressure with falcons. So we have them in a different system than normal. Um, and it's just been a big learning experience this year. Mm. It's been really interesting to chat to Daya because I don't eat chicken or a lot of meat to understand her reasoning behind um, raising animals and doing it in an ethical way. Um, it's been really eye-opening and yeah, just a really different perspective. And it's good to chat to people who are also open-minded about it. And, yeah. you know, we can have actual conversations without upsetting each other and yeah it's been and really just good. be open to having those conversations i Definitely. think it's important yeah. yeah yeah it's been really interesting right i'll turn you around and show you a quick view of the sheep because i've been obsessed with the sheep just looking at the little faces and their little ears like i'm just loving this little it's like a little mini farm too i just love it yeah. <laughs> big stretch oh yes hello hi sheep sheep with all the rain you can see they've just had so much water yeah. <laughs> poor things all right so now we're down at diane and samson's food forest so they have a lot of native um, plants planted around here and this is where we're going to grab a few cuttings i'm going to grab some salt bush to hopefully grow at um, mine but yeah turn you around and show you a few of the native Australian food plants and other plants planted in this area. It's looking really, really pretty. It's a bit woody. Thank you. And that's hopefully one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plants. Ooh. What's your um what's your favorite tree or bush in the area? In this spot? Yeah, in the food forest. I absolutely love the basil, yeah. the native basil. I just love all of the pretty little flowers on it and the leaves. It's uh, a pretty intense herb though. All 
Right, well that was a nice little look around the garden and the homestead. Thank you Diane for showing me around. It was really great. <laughs> yeah, it was really great to see just different things planted, different types of plants, animals, seeing how her whole system works on this homestead because the animals, they all have a purpose as well to help out with either the garden or raising meat, things like that. It's really interesting, so yeah, that was cool. I'm probably going to go and head back inside and pack up a lot of the podcast equipment. Oh, I have some sheep walking by me now. See you guys. The lads. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm going to pack up and then probably drive back and see what I can get up to in the garden. I do have a friend coming tomorrow. I think she's coming tomorrow or maybe the next day. Um, need to confirm and yeah need to set up for her and hopefully we will be able to get a lot done in the garden throughout this week. Mm -hmm.